Warning. The content on this channel is not intended or suitable for minors below 13 years of age. If that is you, please click off and come back when you're older. By continuing beyond this point, you affirm that you are 13 years of age or older. What's up? What is going on, Swearoos? So, we finished the main game of If Found, and there's some bonus stuff on here. So I kind of want to take this, this video is just going to be all the extra stuff. And I just wanted to kind of take a minute and go through what's here. So, alright, right now we are at the end screen, as you can see there. And you can go to each individual title if you want to. And it looks like they are all titled here. I really wish this dot wasn't the... Oh man, I hate this. It's a little dot and it gets lost. White on white, right? You need to have some contrast. So we have what happens now and glossary. All right, so we're going to start with glossary. Okay, and this is just... So this is all of the references. Okay, so I didn't know what GAA was. Okay, the, the Gaelic Athletic Association. Okay. I think I looked through the rest of these during the game, however. Uh, and there are some achievements, I think, that you can um, that you can go through as well. So. Alright, so how do we get back out of here? Alright, we're just going to... I think we can escape. Yeah, we can escape out. Okay. So we have what happens now. All right, so that's where we want to go now. We want to go to what happens now. All right, let's see what happens now. Okay, so 1994, 1998, uh, 1990X, and 2011-2016. All right, so let's do this. So that was in 1993, 94. So let's see what was. Okay. We're going to see what's going on with Sean's. May 15, 1994. John's directions lead me to a bar in Galloway, then up the stairs to a tiny room. I can't imagine it fits more than 30 people. The new band didn't have a name yet, but he's really excited for me to come on the phone. Um, what's some things? The chance for all the post grads to relax and get out of Dublin. The music is so different to what the band she played. Heavy but kind of funky, and I find myself dancing to it without a thought. Afterwards, Chance comes over. He has a little gold hoop in one ear. Full of confidence. He's on a high after playing guitar. We're full of talk for hours. He's excited about doing an audio production course in September. First, he's going to New Delhi for the summer with Tara. They're going to visit some relatives they never met. Aunts, uncles, cousins. Of course, cousins, yes. Do you have somewhere to stay tonight? My couch is always open. Sure. Sounds good. Haven't slept on a couch in a while. His place is small, but has a lot of posters. And a few plans, too. If it's time to say goodbye, we... <laughs> high five. Give him a high five. <laughs> okay. Cool. John's. Uh, they're my best friend. We've been through so much together. They may be better than anyone else will. Okay. Okay, so each, there's little bits and pieces. Let's just, we're going to go through all of these. All right, so this is uh, Mom, August 8, 1984. Mom and I drive down to Kiel. Set a long curving beach beneath the Manon Clutch. Always makes me feel nice. Took a lot of wheedling to get Mom to even think about joining me for a swim, and now she's here having second thoughts. Jump in and you'll be used to it in a second. She shrieks and the waves wash past her. I keep encouraging her, and after a few tentative minutes, one final scream, she gets down. I let myself go and let the waves throw me around. I taste the salt water in my mouth and gasp for breath. I enjoy being alive. Most of all, I enjoy sharing it with men. Oh. The water's cold, but the wind is worse. So wrapped in towels, we dry as best we can and head to Neal's for some tummy worn chips. Hair is working away at me. I'm going to be teaching a class in September, I tell them A tutorial class. 
Do you know that black holes? She doesn't let me finish. Okay. I'm just glad you're happy. She says, being yourself makes you happy, then that's all I want for you. Being myself doesn't mean I'm happy every minute, but it means I can experience emotion at all. Thanks for being here, I guess. Mem. Mem and I love each other. We've had our fights and our struggles, but love has always won out. Okay. These days, we can even say it out loud. Oh, shit. Damn it, I went too fast. Okay, I missed something there. Maggie. Okay. Uh, June 27, 1988, we make the 6 p.m. train to Castlebar before it leaves. Colin will be on the lash for the rest of the day, and that's not... What's that? Oh. Stop drinking. That's not my thing. Um, so I'm escorting Maggie back to Akil to make sure she's home safe. I want to make sure she knows we're grateful. Came all the way to Dublin for Pride to support myself and Colin. I don't think she expected the welcome she got. Everyone wanted to march <laughs> alongside the warm, cuddly granny. She's the center of attention all day. Maggie is still absolutely glowing as she reclines in her seat and interrupts the tuna mayo sandwiches she made us this morning. She asked me what I enjoyed most. Oh, what did we like the best? Oh, let's be nice. Her handmade sign. She, her waving the placard she made this morning. Be nice to the gays. She mentions the gay Seely. A couple nights before. I haven't danced like that in years. Maggie thinks for a minute, takes off her glasses and polishes them, and sets them back on her news. When I was young, she said, all of a sudden, I knew a German woman. Hilda. She was nice. She taught my school for a few years. She loved a good Seely. Hilda told me about the parties that used to have in Berlin. She couldn't be herself in Ireland, and I was terribly sad when she left. She would have loved this week. I want to comfort her. Yeah. Maybe you could still go to Berlin sometime. She thanks me and mentions the weather. Outside, the landscape flashes past. Green, green, and green under a cloud-speckled sky. In the city, the changing seeds didn't always seem very sudden. Maggie. Some might consider Maggie's life to be a sad story, but I admire her. If I get old and stay half as kind and generous and willing to take in lost youth as she is, I'll be very happy. Oh, whoa, I could just write stuff. Mm, what's up? Okay. 1990X. All right. Year one, six months after the event, the dark matter storms have ceased. Black hole radiation has diminished. Cassiopeia has been searching along the west coast for parts that could be used to create a small spaceship. Humans left alive are scattered across the land, panicked and sometimes dangerous. So Cassiopeia keeps to herself. It's good for thinking. Everything is so different now. It has been hypothesized that black holes are the seeds of new universes. Cassiopeia can't be sure. Her opinion changes from day to day. Did the old universe bleed into the new, creating a mix that can't be detangled? So, as Cassiopeia sits alone by a campfire one night, June, she spots someone watching her from the bushes. She stops playing with her makeshift radio and says hello. As they come closer, Cassiopeia's first impression is their eyes, shining in the firelight. What's your name, Cassiopeia says. Anu. She tosses up a can of beans and a blanket, and they eat quietly and hungrily. During the next few months, Cassi Anu and Cassiopeia become inseparable. They make a good team. The last missing piece is Fuel. It takes months, but one day Anu sees something shining on a beach. Cassiopeia runs to them. Her heart fills with... Anticipation. It only takes a few more days to have the ship ready to leave Earth. And... Ooh, it has gotten quiet again. I guess you'll be leaving now, they say, looking down at the ground. Yes, Cassiopeia says, we're leaving as soon as I've done my last safety checks. There's room for two if you want to come. 
Their eyes light up and Cassia sees them really out smile for the first time. Oh, that was cool. Okay. So this is, is this the mom? Four years since the event. Cassiopeia drops down out of the atmosphere above a kill with the latest load of supplies. She's been coming regularly to help the communities rebuild. And to help them build protections against the wild things that have grown up in the vacuum the anomaly left behind. Whoa. As she approaches Keel Post Office, the sea is swarming around it, teeming with tentacled horrors slamming against a tiny building. There's a gun firing desperately through its window. Uh, Cassiopeia quickly maneuvers her ship to angle her plasma thrusters, burning through the test ten testicle tentacles till they retreat. The sea recedes, taking its terrible horrors with it. Cassiopeia lands immediately as she rushes inside to find Brid McHugh holding her shotgun in her hand, looking tired but very much alive. Well, you're a sight for sore eyes, Brid exclaims, and hugs Cassiopeia tight. Brid puts on the kittle and they sit down to catch up. Sometimes I don't know how we keep going. It's all we can do to hold this place together since the event. But you're still a community. That's the important part. Looking out for each other is how you survived and how you will. Brid sighs and looks down at the table at the heap of half-worn crosses she was making before the terrifying interruption. You still make them, Cassiope asks. Every year, it's almost February now. I give them out around the villages for people to hang up. Tradition is important. Maybe someday they'll start calling you St. Bridget, Cassiope says and smiles. Before she leaves, she gives Brid a little token of extra things she could squeeze into the cargo hold. An atomic light that never dims, bright enough to ward away any nightmares. Okay, and last one. Six years after the event, Cassiopeia should have known better than to take risks in authority space, but here she is in an airlock with an airlock staring her in the face, and her final moments closing all too quickly. At least she got the authority one last time. The shipment they've stolen from her will disappear at only a few light years distance. Okay. The bone freezing cold of space hits her face and she closes her eyes. And then, warmth. She opens her eyes again and finds herself in the hold of an old Harris freighter, two elderly women staring at her. Where am I? Where am I? Welcome to the CS Akel Sound. I'm Space Pirate Mags O'Malley, one and only, and this is Captain Hildegard. We've been tracking the authority for a few days. What happened to you, kid? Okay, so this is like a fantasy thing, I guess? The space stories? Cassiopeia tells them her story while they grin at each other. We'll take you as far as Cronus, O'Malley says. Then you could figure out the rest of it out yourself. Cassiopeia's eyes light up. Come with me, she says. The authority will be after us all now. Don't worry about us, Captain Hildegar last. We're old, all right. But we're the most experienced space dogs you'll find in any corner of the galaxy. Space pirate Mags interrupts. There's something we're forgetting. I've set the ship to warp. For now, we're safe as houses. So let's go make a cup of space tea for you. You, you, oh, my wee lamb. You must be parched. I must be. Okay, and so this is going to the very last one. I don't know who Anu is. Was that, is that, is it new Sean's? I don't know. Okay. Oh, damn it. Okay. September 9, 2012. Fregal's baby. Holy fuck. I have, no, I have no hope of saying that name. But whoever it is, lucky and expected. I think she remembers Valerie, but no, he says it. Valerie is a mousy, down go woman. She wears a lot of makeup and complains about it. I think she'd look great with that, too, but I don't say it. Two of us find it hard to make conversations at the best of times. The christening is uneventful despite all the fuss beforehand. Valerie wanted us all up in Donegal. She's a bit younger than Fregal and very much a housemaid, I guess. 
At the dinner at the hotel, everyone's friendlier than I was worried about. Almost all the chat is about the upcoming All Ireland final between Mayo and Donegal and whether Mayo can lift their Sam Maguire curse. Indeed. The local Pine Gale counselor drops by to say hello to her gals. Smug delight. Uh. Me and Fergal are still not very close, but we're polite to each other. He spent years trying to make my mum mad at me for being trans, so I'm happy with politeness. All right. Matt mentions my book, and sure it isn't as good as Baby. I'm not sure she means it or if she's even read it. Fall asleep in the car as we drive home. Okay. Mem. Mom relaxed as she got older. Some of that was money. Once Fergal and I were both settled and doing well, things were easier, and she loves being a granny. There's no doubt about that. Okay. Um, okay, Jack, Maggie, Colin. We're going to save. We'll do this chronologically. All right, so this is the next one. October 11, 2014. I'm on the tube on my way to give a public lecture in the science hall when I see him. Standing on the very... On the far side of a very full cabin by the door in tan coat. Jack. It takes me a long moment to put together in my head, and by the time I realize, he has hopped off. He looks old. When did that happen? <laughs> well, I get off at Oxford Circus and jog to get to my lecture. I'm already cutting it close. I return to my hotel after an evening of... Black holes and event horizons. On my laptop, I look up Jack up online and find him. Even though it's been years, he seems so familiar. How's she cutting, Jack? I lie in bed with the lamps off. Starlight peeks through the curtains. I can't sleep as waves of feeling wash over me. Uh, yeah, sure. Fondness. Okay. Jack. Jack was the one who left. That's always how I think of it. Ireland was just too small for a personality as big as his. Huh. So I guess you can, you could see what happened with him and Colm. But we'll see Colm here, I think, shortly. Okay, this is Maggie again. Uh, December 25, 2014. Maggie comes over to myself and man for Christmas dinner this year. Fergal is with his wife and Colm is visiting friends. I'm happy to come home. It's been too long. Just three little girls, Mom says. Three of us get very giddy, cackling like old hens. The, the what? Pointing, that is. We all come by in the afternoon, and everyone gets a little bit more happy with baby chamomile. <laughs> so I bring Maggie home, and she invites me in for a last drop of tea. I would tell her it was lovely to have her. She should come by again next year. She sighs. I don't think there will be an extra lab, she says with a laugh. Now if the doctor's right, ooh. Don't say it like that. I'm sure you've been through much worse. Oh. She looks out the window. The one thing I want to do is preserve all my old photos. It would be such a shame to lose them. I tell her about how I can digitize them and she loves the idea. We press uh, the last album. Okay. That night I start to look through it. It must be half a thousand. My favorite is... Maggie is a little girl in her school uniform. Okay, that's sweet. Maggie! Maggie sometimes jokes that she lived more in the last 20 years of her life than she did in the first 60. In a funny way, it makes me glad that we met that December and she was able to break out of her shell. Yes. Okay, let's figure out who the hell I knew is. June 13, 2015. This evening, there's a variety show of transforms and arts. The walls of the small cafe are covered in art. The place looks amazing. I helped Sarah set up in the late afternoon and carefully carrying a big stack of plastic chairs over loose cables when Anu walks in. Hey. Who's Anu? In between excited conversations, we barely have the place for any time. We don't get to hang out with each other much these days. 
That's Sean's, I guess. A couple hours later, the place is buzzing. An audience of a white mix of people, some dressed at night, and some shrieking in the corner. I see Anu's wife when she comes in with the kids and go over to say hi and watch beside her. When it's Anu's turn, they perform a spoken piece about coming out as non-binary and their name changing from Ishan to Shans to Anu. The name I take is my heritage, a gift from my lineage. Unlike me, they're okay with being called Shans by very old friends or Da by their own kids, but Anu is what feels right. I close my eyes and listen and let the words wash over me. At the end, the three kids scramble up on stage and the four of them perform a song together. Oh, okay. They're good, of course. I knew it's been playing music and singing with them since they were tiny. But I think it's their combined sweetness that hits the crowd most of all. So this really develops a lot of the texture and a lot of the questions I had when I was playing the actual game. So this, this bit is really cool. I knew... I'm proud of the person they've become. They struggled against discrimination and fought hard to find their own identity, but they're still gracious and so on. Okay, this is the last one. This is Column. Okay, Column. Let's see what you got. May 22, 2016. Column and myself are doing last minute wedding preparations in Maggie's old cottage. He's renting it out for the past few summers since he saw the big house renovated into a posh B&B. We spent the day making sure before Chris's parents arrive. Okay. You, your family, the people who care about you, call them, and we'll all be there. Okay. Just before we leave, call them, place the box of chocolates in the bedroom. Chris loves surprises, and hopefully his parents do as well. Chris has always fallen for his, oh, call him, sorry, has always fallen for spontaneous people, and while I tell him, he smiles. He says Chris is a lot more chill than the others. Okay. We wanted to have our wedding today, Calm says, in celebration of the referendum last year, but it was booked out everywhere. He asked me if I will ever marry. Wow. <laughs> um, he never misses a chance to remind me how I postpone marrying Sam every year. We burst out laughing. He never, he told me I never changed a pants man they had with a rolled up running brochure. <laughs> okay. All right, call him. Uh, it seems mad to say Calm took the biggest risk of us all, but when I think about the, his choice to stay in a I really feel like it's true. I'm so glad he made it work for himself. All right, so Jack left. That's what happened there. Okay. Uh, what are we doing here? Oh, okay. So is that it? Is that all the extras? That part was really nice. I like the epilogue. I like the I like that. That was cool. What's resume? Is this resume or is it resume? Let's see if we can figure it out here. There's stuff I'm missing here somewhere. Can we can we page down it. Okay. All right. I don't know what this is. So you can actually go through, all right, so there's a lot of texture there that uh, that you can get to really develop the characters. I think that is really cool. I, I like that part a lot. That actually might be my favorite part of this entire thing. Uh, but like it, so I, I was saying in some of the other parts, some of their design choices are funky as fuck. Like this little white dot on a white background, that, that's dumb. I mean, make, make it large enough and actually put a solid border around it. So I can tell what's going on, rather than talking about the entire time. So here's the characters you spend this time with. Here's what happens to them at the end. You know, and usually if you're invested at all to play through a game like this, you know, you care about what happens to them. And, you know, you're hoping that they all have happy endings. Uh, in this case, I think most of them did, if not all of them. Uh, that's probably not always the case, but, I mean, it's nice for a video game, I guess. But that, that was a very nice bit right there. So... Uh, that actually, I think, is one of my favorite parts of this. You you trod through hell together with them, and then now you can kind of see that it, it, it has all been to the good because it all worked out really quite well in the end. So, yeah, very well done. Another another excellent Annapurna title. Um, and and like I said, that bit was just a chef's kiss to things, right? 
So definitely, this is a. I'm I'm really liking what they're sort of moving away from the existing definition of video games and doing stuff like this. Like I, I applaud this. This is very cool. So very nice, very nice developers and Annapurna and everybody else. But all right, so there it is. We've gone through everything, everything and if found. There are some elements of the story where you can go back and you can read through all this and you can choose different choices and stuff like that. I'm not going to actually spend any more video time doing that, but it is very cool that you can do that. So if you're, if you're very invested in them, then you can go back and you can get a lot more of that uh, type of, of depth and background to it. Very excellent. I, 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 wish, I wish more games would do that for sure. But uh, that is going to wrap it up for If Found. Uh, this ends part six as well. So we will be back in the very next installment with a new game. So come by and see us for that one. Definitely love to have you. And thanks for hanging out with this one. And until then, swears, peace out.